Hello everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for your Tuesday, April 7th, 2020. Please keep in mind that time is an illusion and energies are fluid. So just because this is dated for the 7th of April, it does not necessarily mean that it absolutely has to resonate for you at that time. Whenever you are guided to watch this reading and it resonates for you, then that is the message for you in that moment. Also keep in mind that this is a general reading. So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Yes. Sorry. I was um, looking for chapstick. <laughs> so I am getting quite a late start this morning. Um, I woke up around 2.30 in the morning because I fell asleep really early last night, which is fine. Um, woke up at around 2.30, meditated for about an hour, was able to get back to sleep around like 4.30. And then, but when I fell asleep, I fell asleep hard and I had a really weird dream. I mean, it was, it wasn't like crazy out there, but it was still a pretty interesting sequence. Um, and then I woke up, but when I woke up, it was 8.30. <laughs> And I'm normally done with recording 8.30, with recording um, morning coffee by 8.30. Not today. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, but when I woke up also, I was feeling like really groggy and weird and just meh. like I fell asleep hard, you guys. So please excuse me if I'm sounding a little, a little melancholy, a little droney, a little off today. Um, I just... It's weird. It's a weird contrast to where I was yesterday, but um, uh, it, it's not without reason. You know, I, I, when I got up early this morning and I did my meditation um, for an, like about an hour or so, I started uh, getting really deep down into some a lot of buried emotions. So I guess uh, me falling asleep after that was like a healing process towards that because of just because of how tired I felt when I woke back up. Like some... Yeah, spirit was like spirit just said yeah some excavation was going on i was like damn okay but um yeah so there's that so i hope you guys have you had a good night last night a good day yesterday i hope you have a good day today um i am planning on going live on instagram tonight because as many of you know i'm moving um and so i've been in the process of putting some things together and i found a bunch of paperwork and files that i no longer need um and I don't have a shredder, so I, but I do have a bonfire pit in my backyard. So, um, and some of those, one of the one of those, actually, two two pieces of this pile that I have are some pretty significant things to let go of. Um, so I'm going to be doing that tonight. Today is the full moon. The full moon is tonight, April seventh, and I believe it's the pink moon. I heard somebody mention that a while ago. Um, so. Tonight is a perfect night to do it. Actually, I've been planning for it. Um, I, me and my roommates started burning some of the stuff last week, but it was too windy. And I was like, well, wait a second. Actually, when's the next full moon? Tuesday. Perfect. So that's going to happen tonight, probably after sundown. So probably like around like 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I am going to go live for it for at least a little bit of it. So if you want to hang out with me and have a little full moon bonfire, we're going to do that. And it is going to be... Well, it's most likely going to be the last bonfire I have in my backyard because when I first moved here, that was a thing. Bonfire Mondays. That was cute. Um, but yeah, so that's going to happen tonight. So if you're interested, just hang around Instagram um, and come party with me. Yeah. And my roommates. Well, two of them. Okay. All right, kids. So enough rambling. Let's just see what's in the cards for us. A two-day ski. Yeah. Okay. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our Tuesday, April 7th, 2020. All right. Thank you so much, Spirit. Um, you know, I'm feeling I want to do like four shuffles on this, but Spirit keeps saying five. 
We're gonna go with five, and which is gonna you gotta have to bear with me because this deck is pretty big and it's hard, a little hard to 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 shuffle. Um, I do want to say I did a little bit of a shuffle before I started um, recording. Nothing came out, but I did look at the bottom of the deck, and the six of swords was at the bottom of the deck. This is two, and that's really relevant. It's relevant for a lot of us because there is movement right now. There's a lot of movement right now, whether you're physically moving or you're energetically moving. There's a lot of movement right now within the collective to move away from situations that are rough, that are tumultuous, that are destructive, that are painful, that are agonizing, that are no longer serving us. Um, and when I looked at that, it was really relevant for me because of like, I guess the little purging session I had last night, you know, or I should say this morning. That's three. So six of swords, moving from rough waters to calmer waters. Four. For the collective and five. Last shuffle here. Okay. All right, so let's see, what's the theme for today? What is the overall overarching message for the collective today? Please, Spirit. Um, for those of you that are wondering, this is the Fairy Tarot deck by um, Doreen Virtue and Radley Valentine. Yes. Okay, Spirit. What's going on for today? Okay. So we've got the Queen of Wands. We've got the Hierophant. Whoa. Whoa. Okay, this is some powerful energy. <laughs> yeah, it is. All right. Over whoa. Okay, overall is the set is the life experience card, which in this deck is the tower. All right. And you know, this kind of makes sense because what we have, we have the Queen of Wands or the Queen of Spring with the three and the seven of spring. So this is the queen of spring, the three of, I'm sorry, the three of wands, the queen of wands, and the seven of wands, okay? And then with that, we have renewal, which is the judgment card, and the hierophant, which is unity here in the in this deck. Again, this is the fairy tarot deck by uh, Doreen Virtue and Rad Radley Valentine. So what I get with this, you guys, is, sorry, let me just fix all this glare here you know i never really noticed how much glare there was with this light i have over here shining on my crystals but i have these shiny cards now so it makes it makes a lot more sense okay anyway <laughs> anyway um i've been trying to figure out how to handle that glare moving on what we have here you guys is a situation in which someone has definitely made up their mind is moving forward is on their path or at least is on the path that they've chosen for themselves um and and they're staying I'm hearing they're staying humble. Okay, so you're staying humble if you resonate with this queen of wands. All right, you're staying humble to a certain extent, but you're also staying on the defensive because at this point you're not about to let anyone stop you from going where you're going because ultimately you've had the tower moment or in this sense the life experience i'm not i'm not picking up specifically that there has been a tower moment that has happened right now or there may have been you may have gone through a tower moment recently fairly recently or something like that but that's not necessarily that instance of a specific tower moment is not what i'm picking up on here i'm picking up on literally what this says the life experience wow with the knight of wands underneath that holy wait no yes yes that is the knight of wands i couldn't tell if this was if the prince was the knight or the page for a second but i was reading through it cautious but wise action meticulous action to detail i'm sorry attention to detail kindness to others meticulous attention attention to detail to me would be like the knight of pentacles energy so basically what i'm picking up on here this is not necessarily one specific tower moment this is a culmination of the things that you've experienced in your life and with the knight of pentacles underneath that you're very much moving quite meticulously um or oh, mm, i'm hearing purposefully like there is a 
a, a shit ton of purpose in your movement right now, in the way, in, in the, the action that you're taking, the path that you're following, the choice you have made to move in whatever direction you're moving in for yourself. And that's because you've learned a heavy amount. The, the, the Unity card in this deck is also, I believe, the Hierophant. And the Hierophant is all about teaching and learning. And what I'm feeling with this here is like, you learn some really hard lessons, okay? Some things that were really difficult to, for you to bear with. It's very masculine in nature, um, but that's not a bad thing. You know, the masculine tends to be the, the masculine energy is energy of the physical world, the fifth, not the fifth, the third dimension. I was about to say the fifth element. <laughs> That is one of my absolute favorite movies. But um, just some hard, strong lessons that are really, you may, have, you may have come out of this battered and bruised. You may come out of this a little resentful. You may come out of this a little angry. It's interesting because what I was dealing with in my meditation this morning was like having a moment of just kind of being pissed at spirit and my guides and all that. It's like, why, why is it necessary to go through all of this trauma? I understand having to learn lessons. I understand having to deal with things that are difficult, you know, because, you know, the, 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 wow, the things that you find the most difficult for you are the elements that you need the most work on. Okay, that makes perfect sense, but why so much trauma, spirit? Why? Why is that necessary? Why is that ever necessary? And, and I had a little bit of a moment where it was like, I, I was looking up at the powers that be in the, in, in the higher consciousness. It's like, I just... I don't understand why all this trauma. I, that's that's all I have to say. Why all this fucking trauma? Like, the, I don't feel like I'm ever going to recover from certain things that I've experienced. Not just over the last two and a half to three years. It's over my whole lifetime. Like, to, like going back on all of it. It's like, how am I ever supposed to heal from that? You know. <laughs> but ultimately, you have a rebirth because then you have renewal, which is the judgment card. So you're rising above it. You're coming out of it with a different perspective. And I guess, I guess that's what was meant for anyway. You're becoming a new person. You've changed the game. You flipped the script. You have totally reshaped, remade yourself. But there's still, and I don't know, for me at least, please let me know if I'm, I guess, picking up on what you're feeling too, or maybe even speaking on your behalf in some ways. But for me, it's just like, I, I look back on some of these, on, the, on some of this stuff and it's like, why? why? <laughs> there wasn't, there wasn't a better way to do that. I mean, apparently not. I'm not on that higher focus. So, okay. It, but that can be pretty egoic. I'm not going to lie. And even when I was sitting in that, <clears throat> that energy during the meditation, I was saying to myself, Eric, this feels really egoic. And it's like, okay, fine. It might feel really egoic. It might even really seem or be really egoic. But right now, this is a legit point. This is legit how I'm feeling about this. But ultimately, that is your ego. Because spirit doesn't see it that way. But spirit has a different perspective. It's not that spirit is insensitive. It's not like spirit doesn't feel what we're feeling or go through what we're going with, going through right along with us, but they have a higher perspective than the ego mind does. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's, um, let's start clarifying a little bit. I want to talk about the queen of wands here. I want to talk about the queen of wands first. We're going to go with the crystal visions again today, just like yesterday. One last shuffle. And then let's talk about this beautiful, brilliant, loyal, talented, friendly, vibrant queen of spring or AKA Queen of Wands. What's the deal with this Queen of Wands energy? The Five of Wands in reverse. Well, that's that shit. That's good. Um, and the biggest thing that I'm getting from this, what I'm hearing from spirit is you're overcoming a sense of um, inner turmoil or inner battle here. 
Um, you're cutting out the middleman. You're cutting out all of the external influences. You're you're working even. You're even working on cutting out the the chatter within. Okay. Yeah, with the hermit here. The hermit at the bottom of the deck. I just look. I'm. I'm. I don't. I'm. I really hope I'm not projecting. And please help me understand that I'm not projecting here. So please leave in the comments if this is resonating with you. But what I feel from this Queen of Spring is, she's not necessarily the bright, vibrant individual that she normally is. I mean, yes, yeah, she's the, still the Queen of Spring, or she's still the Queen of, of Wands. But there is a deep sense of sorrow within, which is interesting because you wouldn't necessarily pick up on that. But it's but I believe it's coming through as the Queen of Wands or the Queen of Spring because just because there's sorrow or a little bit of like pain, it doesn't mean you've lost any of your drive. It doesn't mean you've lost any of your vibrancy. It doesn't mean you've lost really much, if any, of your passion. But there is a deep sense of sorrow. And I'm getting it mainly from this hermit energy because what I'm feeling is this Queen of Wands or this queen of spring is like really turning inward and facing herself, focusing on herself, focusing on her emotions. And that makes, and actually that would be a really good thing for you to do, especially if you're doing that and you're not really sure why it is you're doing it, you're just naturally doing it. That's you being in this queen of wands, queen of spring energy, because I see the queen of wands as a physical representation of the law of, uh, of attraction. And in order to really be flowing with that law, uh, that universal law, you have to make sure that you clear your energetic space and you work on getting into alignment with that which you truly seek or that which you desire. And so here, this would be that you going into get, working on getting into alignment, cutting out the middleman, cutting out the, the, the peanut gallery, cutting out the, the chatter, the external and influ internal influence or chatter that's just holding you back or stopping your drive. But with that comes some excavation. And that's where the sorrow is coming in. Let's continue. Let's continue. Please tell us a little bit more about this Queen of Spring. Five of... Ooh, whoa. Okay, well then there's the Five of Swords. The Two of Cups, which seems to be in reverse. Oh. Yeah, the Two of Cups is in reverse. But we do have the Knight of Wands. Ooh. Okay, well, there's the Queen of Swords and there's the Five of Cups. <laughs> and it's so funny because when I was thinking about this, I was picking up on an energy that was other than the Queen of Wands. And I kind of felt like it was the Queen of Swords, but I couldn't really put a finger on it because it felt emotional also. So it could have kind of been the Queen of Cups. It could have even been the Queen of Pentacles. But actually, it's the Queen of Swords that's come out, which is perfect because fire fuels, oxygen fuels fire, excuse me. And so wow you guys <laughs> wow we wow 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 we do have the eight of swords at the bottom of the deck though and i guess what that eight of uh, okay i'm getting two things what i'm getting here i'm getting a number of things but five of swords to me is feeling like an against all odds energy it's like i'm getting out of here regardless of what it takes and with this Eight of Swords here, it feels like you might feel like you have no choice in the matter but to move in the direction that you're moving towards because that mo direction that you're moving towards is in fact love or it is a, a direction that's uh, 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 an, an endeavor that's being undertaken through the eyes of self-love. This is an interesting energy to be in because you feel stuck, you feel trapped, you feel like you have no other way out, you feel like you have no other option, and yet that other, uh, that, the, the direction that you're moving in is actually a really beautiful and beneficial uh, direction. Might be, for a lot of you, or a lot of us, might be an, a direction that you were always meant to move in, but you never really did it, and so now you're stuck between a rock and a hard place, or your back is against the wall, and you have no other option but to move forward in this direction of self-love. Gee, that's interesting. Um, and you're moving, and you don't really know what it is you're moving towards. The unknown. You have to trust. You have to have faith. You have to just believe and just move forward, because ultimately, where it's taking you is satisfaction. And what I'm feeling already with this Nine of Cups energy is that you've already found a level of satisfaction in moving 
however you've moved in uh, so far. Knight of Wands. Okay. The, look, this definitely has to do with a relationship for some of us. Um, a partnership, a creative bond. Okay. But the strongest thing I'm getting here is relationship. A relationship that did not work. A relationship that did not come to fruition. Something that was promised that never happened. And that broke your heart. I mean, look, you have, you, I told you, see, I knew it. You have three fives on this queen. The five of wands, which is in reverse, which is good. But then you have the five of swords and the five of cups. And you could say that the five of wands being in reverse is you being in an energy, is someone here being in an energy of constantly fighting themselves, being stuck in an energy of an ego battle, whether that's external or internal. But I don't necessarily feel like that. I feel the strongest thing, and, and you that could be you, okay? The, the, the scenario could be that you are stuck in this place of indecision or having an ego, an ego internal battle, which is sabotaging you, five of wands to the five of swords. And ultimately it's creating this emotional upheaval for you, five of cups, you're stuck in sorrow, but I don't see it that way fully. It could be that for some of you, you're finding a quick moment like that, or like a hot second like that, because then ultimately you have more of oxygen fueling fire. You have the queen of swords and the knight of wands. So the knight of wands is speaking to moving forward and with the queen of swords energy you're cutting shit out yeah you might still be upset obviously i was picking up on some sorrow here for this queen of wands but this five of swords energy is very much like a get me the fuck out of here now i don't care what i have to do i don't care who i don't care what bridges i burn i don't care what fights arguments who i lose what i lose i don't care just get me the fuck out of here i'm done with this I'm done with this bullshit. This is not worth it for me, is what I just heard. This is not worth it any longer. And to be quite honest, it probably was never worth it. I do want to talk about this, this Knight of Wands energy later. Um, but what I want to go to now is I want to look at the Three of Spring or the Three of Wands because... Here's this, here's this part that I'm having trouble with, with spirit, because what I'm picking up on is with this three of wands, this was part of your path all along. And that's my exact question. Why the hell all the sorrow? I did just see 22, 22 on the counter. So, okay, great. But why all the sorrow? Why does this have to be? Let's just look at it. So. Three of Wands, Three of Spring, Spirit. What is this? What can you tell us about this, please? Oh, okay. Well, it looks like we have so far the Ten of Swords, which is in reverse. No, it's the Ace of Swords in reverse. With the Ace of Pentacles upright. What I'm hearing is you didn't get the truth, but that's okay. You're starting over anyway. Yeah, yeah, you are. Look, the chariot is at the bottom of the deck. Okay, so, ooh, ooh, okay, ooh, okay. <clears throat> I want to talk about this Ace of Swords in reverse. However, I got a flash that we're going to talk about that with the Golden Universal deck. Okay, that's fine. Let's talk about... The Seven of Wands, then. What's the Seven of Wands, please, Spirit? Interesting. Yeah, you're really... You're, ti you're tired. Look, you're tired of fucking around. You have the Seven of Cups here on the Seven of Wands. The Seven of Wands is a defensive energy, keeping your guard up. You're defending yourself from public opinion. You're defending yourself from the, the hive mind excuse me you're defending yourself from the collective consciousness your friend you're defending yourself from the illusions the confusions of grandeur the people that would want to stand in your way confuse you try to get you off your path try to change your direction try to change your trajectory you're breaking free from the hive mind you're breaking free from the mold you're defending yourself from that as you do so okay underneath the deck there's that eight of swords again 
And this still feels like an energy of like not really having a choice. And that makes, and to be honest with you guys, that kind of makes sense. Not all the cards are on the, in the frame here. But that kind of makes sense, guys, because of this. Well, both of these. Unity or the Hierophant and Renewal or Judgment. You, you, because of what you learned. You're being, a, you're being called to something more. You're being called to something new. <laughs> It's very much an energy of like you, once you wake up, you can't go back to sleep. You have no other choice. I mean, okay, all right, let's let like okay, let's be real about it. You do have a choice. You could stay there or you could move on, but your life experience dictates that there is no way there is a, a, there is absolutely no way that I would stay there. Hell would freeze over before I continue to allow myself to deal with that bullshit, right? It's kind of how that one feels. Five, five, five on the counter. Big change, you guys. Big, big change. So with that said, uh, let's get into the Golden Universal Tarot because there are two things that I want to talk about. Actually, no. We're going to start with the regular universal tarot here and i want to talk about this knight of wands energy i want to see where you're going i want to i want to get you some advice on that maybe some something to look out for one more shuffle and then we'll talk about this knight of wands oh okay we have three cards that have come out already. You have the Empress with the Eight of Wands and the Eight of Pentacles. <laughs> I'm sorry. The Empress, the Eight of Wands. That is so crazy. The Empress, the Eight of Wands, the Queen of Pentacles. But then the Eight of Pentacles is on the bottom of the deck right now. I didn't know the Eight of Pentacles was on the bottom of the deck when I said it. I, I said Eight because I had just said Eight of Wands. And then I was trying to say Queen of Pentacles. But I said, okay, you get it. Um... Damn. Okay, so you're really taking life into your own hands here. There is definitely a level of being the in the Empress energy and having the way clear to having the energy and the space and, and everything cleared away from you because of you knowing what your worth is. And having done the work to get yourself to that place, but also doing the works, continuing to do the work too. Because the Queen of Pentacles, she ain't no slouch. She ain't no slacker. I mean, she knows how to have a good time. She knows how to take it easy. She knows how to rest and recuperate. But also, if there's work to be done, honey, she's doing that work. Get her done. Right? Let's get a little bit more on this Knight of Wands, please, Spirit. Oh. There is injustice here. She was treated unfairly. She was not treated in kind. She was used and abused. Her power and her energy were usurped. She allowed this to happen. That's the hardest thing about this, isn't it? About this lesson we had to learn. Three of Wands. We allowed these things to happen. We didn't necessarily know any better, but we went through it so we could learn it. My question is, why does it have to be so painful? Why does it have to be so damn traumatizing? Why? We're going to look at this injustice. Now I'm going to move to the Golden Universal because I want to get this direct from Spirit. I want to get Spirit's advice on this, I guess, or the highest perspective that I can get from this. All right, so we're going to talk about this injustice here, and then we're going to talk about that Ace of Swords in reverse. Because that Ace of Swords is screaming, you didn't get the truth, but you're moving on anyway, or you're starting something new anyway. You have a new, a new start anyway. 
with that Ace of Pentacles. And it's on the Three of Wands. And look at the Three of Wands is at the bottom of the deck here with Justice in Reverse there. All right, so we're going to talk about that in a second, but let's start with Justice. One more shuffle. All right, Spirit. So what's the deal with this injustice here? Knight of Wands, Knight of Cups, Three of Cups, Seven of Pentacles in reverse. With the star. Oh, gee, that's nice. Do you, do you hear the cynicism in my voice? Huh, that's nice. Healing? Oh, great. Wish fulfillment? Huh. Awesome. You've been talking about that for how long now? Hmm. I'm wearing my ego mask, if you can't tell. Because I'm not pleased. I'm not excited. I'm not happy. I'm disappointed. I'm hurt. I'm mad. I'm sad. Disillusionment. Despair, apathy, boredom. Okay, that's fine. Knight of Wands, Knight of Cups, Three of Cups, Seven of Pentacles. Gaslighters, fuck boys, fuck girls. People that are just in it for their own emotional fulfillment, their own emotional gain or their own career gain or their own ego gain the hive mind, how it looks to everyone else. With the seven of pentacles here being in reverse, uh, this does feel like over and over and over again, we were doing the same things, expecting a different result. Definition of, of insanity. <laughs> I was going to say definition of anxiety. Yeah. Um, but also with the seven of pentacles in reverse, I'm feeling like we finally put this to rest here. And now there is in fact healing coming through. Okay. Uh, please excuse my apathy in the face of your proposed healing. Let's go a little deeper. Why seven of pentacles in reverse here, spirit? Five of swords. <laughs> it was a lose-lose situation, y'all. And so for the sake of greater balance, two of pentacles, this literally feels like you had no other choice but to balance the scales, to bring greater balance into your life, physically, mentally, emotionally, financially. And so thus you had to drop the struggle. You had to drop the, drop the battle. You recognized that it was a lose-lose situation, that you were never gonna get what you wanted in this circumstance. And so you wised up, you grew up, you glowed up is really what it is. You glowed up in the face of this injustice and now, now look at you. Ooh, now look at you. Queen of, Queen of Pentacles, Queen of Wands, Queen of Swords, the Empress. The only thing we don't have here is the Queen of Cups. Hmm. Big surprise there. Because it really does. I mean, maybe it's just maybe it's just me being in this energy right now. Um, or maybe it's just that I'm, I'm reading it again, please guys, if I'm, please, please help me understand that I'm not just fully projecting here, but it, it feels like compassion has kind of flown out the window at this point. Not that it's gone forever, not that it's gone completely, but right now, compassion who? Compassion what? Sorry, does not compute. Sorry, I don't, I don't speak English. I don't know what that word is. <laughs> Yikes. Very Queen of Swordsy though. Like, just get the fuck out of my way. And leave me the fuck alone. I'm tired, I'm done. 
You don't ever have to worry about me again. You'll never see. Mm, mm, mm. Mm -hmm. You get it. Okay. So, okay. Let's talk about this now. On our three of wands here, we have the ace of swords in reverse, but you also have the ace of pentacles upright. So spirit, let's talk about this ace of swords in reverse. What is this? Why is the ace of swords in reverse here? Well, shit. What the hell? Are you kidding me? I mean, yes, that's the ace of swords, but there's another ace behind it. Tell me that's the ace of pentacles behind it. No, it's the ace of cups. Oh, wow. This was on your path all along, you guys. Learning to love yourself. Ace of swords, ace of cups. <laughs> all right, with the page of wands underneath that at the bottom of the deck. And the page of wands for me has very much become an energy of re-identifying yourself. A midlife crisis, a quarter life crisis, if you want to call it that. Changing the game, flipping the script, finding out how truly powerful you really are. And I guess kind of vowing to never allow someone to take your power away from you again in this reclaiming of your power. Let's go a little deeper on this Ace of Cups, Ace of Swords, Den Spirit. Anything else you want to say? Here's that Eight of Swords. Yeah. It literally backed you into, put your back against the wall. Eight of Swords, the Two of Wands. It said, all right, fine. Spirit is like, fine, you don't want to make a decision. We're going to force you to make a decision. And it's not because we don't love you. Remember, we're trying to get you to learn to love yourself. So we're going to back you up against the wall until you finally choose to do so. And I get, and, and spirit is saying, and, and, you know, part of the extreme situation is that so that you'll have the memory of it and you'll never go back there again. That's why. See how I'm answering my own questions here. Knight of Pentacles. Knight of Pentacles. Slowly but surely, we are moving away from this. Ace of Wands. Right there underneath in a new direction newly inspired and yeah ready to go i was just about to say ready to go and it's like you damn right we're ready to fucking go like we couldn't get out of here fast enough is kind of how this feels <laughs> lord have mercy Alrighty, kids, I'm going to close out this reading. We're going to go with the Lightworker Oracle today. Closing message, please, spirit. Oh, shit. There it is. Okay, card number six. Fourth ray of harmony. <laughs> Excuse me. Good Lord, Eric. That is so rude. <laughs> Sorry, guys. The fourth ray of harmony comes to you now with the qualities of beauty harmony and balance. It empowers you to complete a spiritual initiation. Any conflict you experience now serves your divine purpose. It will eventually become the fuel you need to be born anew. Something negative will be transformed into something positive. The Archangel Gabriel gives or helps you to receive the blessing of the fourth ray of harmony now. All right, 
When the fourth ray of harmony is active in your life, you are approaching spiritual initiation, which creates a whole new person, a new you. Initiation may begin with feeling torn between two choices or realities. You may wonder if you have what it takes to get through this. You do. As you discover your strength to be patient with the process, rather than trying to force an outcome prematurely, eventually you will outgrow the conflict altogether, emerging a wiser, more powerful you. You will have gained a positive outcome from what was once considered to be a negative situation. When the fourth ray of harmony becomes stronger in your soul, avoid becoming scattered, out of balance, or swinging from one extreme to the other in thoughts, actions, and emotions. You will need to keep grounding yourself and being moderate rather than, quote, all or nothing, yikes, in your life choices. This will create your successful outcome more swiftly than trying to force something to happen immediately. The mainstream is still operating in a fear-based energy. With increased sensitivity, you can at times be more affected by this. If you are experiencing increased negativity, depression, doubt, fear, or emotional instability, this is likely why. You can overcome this without shutting down. When you sense it happening, respond with a loving discipline. You might meditate, journal, dance, create art, listen to music, exercise, have a bath, or spend time in nature to bring yourself back to balance. This ray has a special connection with to the arts and guides you to create. You are encouraged to trust your own creativity, to enjoy it and use it to help heal yourself and perhaps others too. When Archangel, and, Archangel Gabriel enters your life, there will be an emphasis on the use of sound for healing and balance. So the words you use, affirmations for example, and the invocations in this deck will be very powerful. So will music. You may sound you may use sound to help balance and restore your energy. You'll know when it has worked because you will feel happier and find life simpler. You may not immediately solve an issue, but start doing what you need to take care of yourself, knowing resolution is on its way. And when I said that, that last sentence, I saw 4144 on the counter, which I definitely do take as a 444. And now I see 456. <laughs> All right, there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you guys have a good day. Um, and I hope you guys can join me later for our bonfire, full moon release bonfire. Oh my God, you know, that's, that's right. We have this full moon today. So it kind of makes sense that we might be feeling these purgy energies. Makes total sense. I love you guys. And I hope you have a fantastic day. And if I don't see you tonight, then I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? Take care. Bye.